Pupilo after high school can be stressful, confusing, and frustrating all at the same time. Whether it's figuring out to look at a school of Kai, Kapo, Utovani, Lidi, financial burden, or the lack of opportunity in tertiary education. And the list really does go on. Kanete, man. And studying in the USA, your opportunity is a lot more achievable than most people could even be thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, the US Embassy developing an education advisory, advisory program, Elongori Tusha, Manamu Africa, for all the students in South Africa um, to go and be able to study in the USA. It's called the Education uh, USA. Speaking of which, let us go check this out. Hello, South Africa, from a cold morning here in Rochester, New York. My name is Ronaldo. I'm a third year student studying finance at the University of Rochester. Studying in America has been a life-changing opportunity and a wonderful journey of discovery. A massive thank you to Education USA for helping me through the application process. They've really supported me and guided me all the way. I highly recommend reaching out to them if you're interested in studying in the United States. They're a great resource and studying in the United States is more achievable than you think. So you're going to learn Leon, uh, Education USA advisor. And we should like to Claire Powell from North Carolina today to take us through this process. Hey, Hello. Claire. Hi, how are you guys? doing? Good. How are you? Awesome. All right. The idea of America is always grand and yeah. big and far away. <laughs> it's the American dream. Um, and today we're just talking about the possibilities of studying uh, overseas. How possible is it? Is it, it? is it as tedious, if I could call it that, as applying in, in South Africa? Is there a difference? Um, there is quite a big difference in the applying to the US. Um, I wouldn't say it's more tedious. Yeah. There is a lot of paperwork, yeah. and, um, but it, the big thing when, when we're advising students is to look at a program um, and really make sure that you find the best fit as a student. Yeah. And how long has the process been? I mean, the program been running? Uh, the program's been running uh, probably in its current form under the Education USA brand for about 20 years. Uh, but educational advising program or uh, you know student advising has been run out of the U.S. Embassy since the 1920s. Wow, so it's, it's been a long, long process. Claire, most mm -hmm. times I'm, I'm just thinking like studying abroad. Most times we think of uh, a postgraduate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Most people yeah. are like, oh, okay, I've got yeah. a degree now. Yeah. I can go overseas do my yeah. masters or PhD, whatever the case may be. Um, is it quite? Is studying abroad for fresh out of high school students quite a big thing? Is it? Are we seeing a larger number of students taking up the option? The, you know, the numbers over the, you know, the most recent years have been quite consistent. There hasn't, you know, um, been anything larger or less. And yeah. the students, uh, there's always been a healthy appetite or interest in studying in the yeah. U.S. And so, you know, right out of high school, you know, the undergraduate numbers are definitely there and it's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, and that's our bread and butter, I would say, at Education yeah. USA is helping undergraduate students navigate that process of finding universities but also putting together strong applications. Awesome. Sure. Mm -hmm. So now let's say I literally just hopped out of uh, you know, uh, high school, so I'm yes. a trick rather, and I've got a couple of distinctions. Mm -hmm. uh, way through from there, how do I make sure that, or how do I apply basically yeah. to somehow be studying in America? So what's the process basically? Ideally you should start Especially before even finishing the trek, yeah. uh, to do the research. But if you've got everything ready and you want to transfer, then you're more than welcome. Uh, the big thing is to come to an information session that we hold monthly. Yeah. Come and hear about what's involved with the process, how to put a good application okay. together, and then um, you know, getting those pieces of the puzzle ready and doing yeah. the research. Awesome. Yeah. We've seen um, that affordability yes. is quite a big thing when it comes to tertiary education. Um, fees must fall because mm. there's a perfect example in South Africa where you see that um, there's a demand for students to want to be in, in tertiary institutions yes. but it's the lack of funds. Yes. Is this more expensive? Are there platforms for students who feel that really this is something I want to do yeah. but I don't have the financial muscle or is this mm. an exclusive for those who can, can do it? Well, see that's the beauty of the US is that because of the vast differences and um, offerings of institutions, uh, there are many, many institutions that look strictly at financial need of students and they take that into account when awarding um, financial aid packages. So whether it, you can only afford you know, 50 Rand or something of that, that nature, but if you're a competitive applicant yeah. um, on the academics and on the extracurricular, uh, there are probably about a hundred of the 5,000 that would be looking to offer full financial aid. Wow, awesome. that's yeah. amazing. And uh, if, if, if sorry, do you make it through? Um, yes. Were there ever cases of young South Africans struggling to adapt to the U.S. system or like struggling to generally just 
adapt university as it is. Yeah. Mm. Well, luckily, uh, from the South Africans that have been working um, with me, at least in the six, and a, or mm. six years that I've been in this role, um, they've all adapted very, very well. Mm. And I have to say, one of the greatest things about the, the campuses and kind of the influx of international students is that they've got some great support on campus. Okay. Uh, so the international student offices are, are good to help them adapt to culture so, and, you know, to make sure that they have a family away from mm. home. Yeah. And part of Education USA, our big thing is, you know, we take students as a cohort. When we're taking them through the process mm. and working with them, they become a little family in, in themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, and then they know when they're going over with each other, look, we're going over, let, you know. I know someone. someone. I know <laughs> someone. I've got my camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, it's, so they've got that little family and we, we make a big effort uh, just before they head out to do a pre-departure. Mm -hmm. We have actual former and current students that are over in the U.S. to come and uh, speak and uh, give some advice. And mm -hmm. What are some of the perks of studying overseas as compared to maybe just going to UJ around the corner? Sure. All things that really stand out to me in terms of uh, education in the U.S. is the choice and flexibility. Many students can actually start off studying in the U.S. Uh, not knowing exactly what they want to study, but can take a variety of courses um, in their first years and towards the end of their second year, uh, declare a major. Mm. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that, that, that would have been awesome. great. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the second things is just the, uh, kind of the quality and kind of the exposure to world court leaders, professors, uh, facilities, research and development. Um, and then one of my personal favorite parts of it is, you know, as a South African, you are educating and bringing a perspective of South Africa onto a U.S. campus. Yeah. You're educating those students on those campuses to become more globally competent uh, citizens. Yeah. Yeah. And then vice versa, um, I think it allows you as an individual person mm -hmm. to develop your global knowledge and um, yeah. understanding of yeah. other people. Well, Claire, thank you so much for coming in and sharing information. The website details are there at the bottom of the screen. Make sure if you're interested, get as much information as possible. But I'll the information night. Uh, make sure that you go to one of them and get as much information as you possibly can. And hey man, maybe you'll be like calling us from yeah, California. Or like, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> LA, yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> right out there, man. And if you really, really want to study abroad, get Jan Waraker. So go out there and apply. Right now, though, we're about to go for an ad break. So you see you guys off the this. From growing up in a small township in Mabopani Northwest to graduating cum laude at the Alabama State University. After an incredibly challenging time during his schooling years, he didn't qualify to study a bachelor's degree and opted to do a diploma instead. Robaya worked hard and proved to everyone that diplomas are just as important as degrees. He then opposed the government for support. After receiving a scholarship to study at Alabama State University in the USA, he was funded to ensure that he is able to succeed without having to worry about where to stay in a foreign land. Now back in South Africa, Garabo is one of the youngest trainee financial managers in one of our country's leading motor retailers. My name is Garabo Robaya. I, I studied through Education USA in the United States of America. I, I was one of the uh, Opportunity Fund students. So they, they started a program in which they said they wanted students who come from previously disadvantaged backgrounds um, to apply for startup funds because before you can go to the United States there are some fees that you have to pay in the process um, particularly for your standardized test, for application fees and to apply for visas for your flights and everything. So I, I, I was selected after um, several essays and applications within the Centen U.S. Consulate General Education U.S.A. branch. So I, I, I got this opportunity through them. Um, yeah, I'm an education fund recipient. I can say my my drive um, my drive came from the economic circumstance that I found myself in. It was not dire, but I wanted to improve it. I, I wanted to be the first in my family. I wanted to, to build and leave a good legacy. Um, because in the US we are referred to as first generation college students. They even have programs encouraging people to go to college and be the first in family. 
I just wanted to make myself and my mother proud and my community. I was I was raised in such a space whereby I had to encourage myself and yeah. Um, edu- um, I'm partnering with Education USA was was like a very good or added advantage to my to my dreams of studying abroad. Um, they 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 are like an archive uh, or information booth for every development within the U.S. higher education. So they they were able to help me and connect me with the relevant schools that 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 were as per how I classified my interests. So I told them I want to be in a different school, different different things, different, different. So we we, we the way the way engaged with Claire Power helped me. I can tell you, without Education USA, um, perhaps for a person who comes from my economic background, I would have not it would have not been much easier or possible. So they 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 made it quite easier for me or, or, or possible. They. They, they 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 connected me with professors within my studies. They connected me with different people within our society who 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 are invested within the studying abroad and something like that. And even the networking sessions, they have even good networking sessions in which students can meet and and talk about um, different fundraising options to go study abroad. And yeah, so they they made it quite easier for me. You know, such things if someone has had to call out a consultant and pay for them at the higher price, so they are open to the public, and they say, look, come. We, in spite of um, your background, where you come from, we're here. We have the resources. We have the library for you. So like, they have the libraries. So when you even do standardized standardized tests, they will even um, invite you within the U.S. embassy. A libraries get you on the computers get you the right materials you need to use to get the good scores to make it to college and even check other extra things that you do that you might use as a forward or as something to put forward for your application to be stronger to get a third scholarship. So they, I can say, they made it possible for me to go and study abroad and they can make it possible for any other student who might be watching us um, who's interested in studying abroad in the United States of America. Wow, going to Alabama and adapting to the culture of the United States of America. Mm. Um, first it was hot. <laughs> I was told that, listen friend, the South is very hot. <laughs> Especially Dallas. So, you know, I was feeling so, like, I'm like, man, I'm from Africa. <laughs> It's not this bad. <laughs> so I wonder what's going on in Dallas, Texas, if this is hot in Alabama. So I, 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 I can say the American life is exposed a lot to us, especially within the entertainment industry. They thought I was shocked culturally when I engaged with natives or students there. But I told them, no, guys, I, I see your programs on TV, you watch your movies, that's how we grew up. And it was not even hard for me to hear them because they speak the same way a set star speaks on a movie. So they're like, yeah, you can hear me, yeah. But they, they were struggling to hear me, you understand? So it was, it was, it was not bad because of that. Um, the food, I had to get used to it. Um, but we eat more or less the same thing. Yeah, I just need this and this and this, and then later on, I would go slow by slow, getting used to other stuff. Yeah, and thing. So my assimilation was not was not bad. They were quite welcoming. Um, they they and and again, remember, I was not. It was not the first time going into a college environment for me. So when I was admitted at Alabama State University, I was admitted as a transfer student. So I've already went through my. Um, university, I paid my dues here in South Africa. So when I got that site, I assimilated quite quicker and easier. It was just a matter of speaking English only and <laughs> not having access to my Tuana Zulu course and stuff, yeah. <laughs>